I am knowingly and fully aware that I am terrible at planning out my day. There are many days where I will work on the exact same thing for eight plus hours. It's not like I'm not being productive, I just spend a lot of time doing a single thing. So maybe a to-do list is gonna help me out a little bit. So today we're looking at a tool called Do It, spelt with two O's because the developer realized there is a Python library with the exact same name. Now, as any long-term viewers may have already realized, this is also going to be Vim inspired because what else am I going to use? And I don't just mean with the mode indicator in the bottom left-hand corner here, I also mean with its key bindings. But before we get into that, you can probably see the little thing behind my webcam there. That's just the date and the time. I'm gonna leave my camera there because it's kind of the best spot to put it. So before we can do anything else, we first need to go and create a list. This is done by pressing the A key. This is then going to prompt you for a name and also put you into insert mode. So let's just call this video ideas, for example. Press enter and the list is going to be made. It also takes you down to the next line. So we can go and make another one. This is list two. Another one, this is list three. And then when we're done, pressing escape is gonna take us back to normal mode. Now, as you might expect, pressing the I key is gonna put you into insert mode. So we can go and change the name of this one. Let's just change it down to this by itself. Pressing escape is gonna go and update that name. One thing to note is if you restart the application, it's going to reorder your menu into alphabetical order. Now let's go and add something into one of these lists. So first thing we need to do is make sure we're actually focused on one of the lists. So let's go and use the video ideas. There's a couple of different ways we can get into the to-do side. One of those is by pressing enter on that list. Another way is we can go and navigate using our Vim key, so the L and the H key. Or what we can do is if we're so inclined, click on the list with our mouse. Now, I don't personally care to do this, but if you wanna do so, it is an option. From here, we make entries in the exact same way. Pressing the A key is gonna put us into insert mode. From here, we can go and start typing. Pressing enter is gonna go make another line, another line, another line, so on and so forth, as many as we want to go and make. But you might also wanna go and add a child entry to one of these items. Let's say, for example, this one here. Let's go and change it to something actually useful. So, um, today's videos, for example. And what I might wanna do is go and say the videos that I want to be doing today. So if we go and press capital A, it's gonna make a, I guess, a sub entry. Let's say, uh, do it video, let's say Wayland video and whatever other videos I might be working on. Now, if you feel like it, you can also make these sub entries for the lists as well. So I can have a sub list to this one and call it uh, whatever this text is, make another one, so on and so forth. And these are all treated like their own independent lists. So we can have something in this list and I can have something in this list and they are completely separate from each other. Along with this, the parent list is also a completely separate list. One thing I think would be really cool with this is if the parent list was actually a combination of all of the child lists. Now, sometimes you don't want these lists fully expanded. So while highlighted on the parent, if you press lowercase z, it is going to close that list. Pressing it again is going to open it. And then while on one of the children, if you press capital Z, it is going to close the list. Now, as you may expect from a Vim inspired application, pressing capital G is gonna take you to the bottom of the list and pressing lowercase g is going to take you to the top. Now in Vim, it's actually GG, but a lot of applications like this tend to shorten down to a single key press. So with these to-do items, the first thing you probably wanna do is set a date where it needs to be done. Let's say with this do it video, if we press D, this is gonna take us into date mode. Now it's not entirely clear from the application itself, but if we go and just type something in here and then let it error out, it's gonna tell us the date format. This is in dd-mm-yyyy. So pretty straightforward format. I'm gonna set it to the first of the first in 1970. And if we go and press escape, it is going to set that date. Now being a date that has already passed, it is going to use a slightly different symbol and also have it be in red. Let's see if we can see it, this guy right here. So let's go and set a date sometime in the future and see what it does. 
I'm going to set it to 01 or 02 dash 01 dash 2030. So in this case, the symbol doesn't change because it is still a date in the future and everything is still the same color. However, if we go and press the C key, this is going to mark something as complete. Let's go and mark this one as complete and also this one. Now, when you have a sublist like this, it is also going to mark them off in this counter up here. So if we go and uncheck this one here, it goes back to one of two. But they don't have to have a date or a sublist for you to actually go and check them. Let's say you want to check this one here, this one here. All of those are going to check perfectly fine. You may have also spotted the D symbol over on the right hand side. This basically indicates the urgency of this particular activity. Right now everything is set to the lowest urgency, it doesn't go any lower than D, but the rating it's currently on can be modified with the plus or the minus keys. Let's say this one here that's not done yet, let's go and raise this up to say an A for example, A being the highest rank. When I say plus or minus, I'm also including the shift modifier version of these keys as well, and this is what every single application developer out there should be doing and the minus key are on different shift layers so just saying plus or minus makes it really really annoying to use speaking of shift if we want to go and rearrange either of these lists this can be done with the shift key let's say for example i don't want the today's videos being in the center here i want it to be at the top for example if we hold down shift and then press J or K, it'll let us go and move this list around. I'm going to put it up the top here. Now this does slightly break in the case of an entry with child elements. So if we go and open up this list and then try to do the same thing, it doesn't let us move it down. Let's just move it further down. I'll show you something. So it lets us move it up, but not down. That's very clearly a bug. But by the time you guys actually see this, this very well may be addressed. If there are any of these entries you don't like and you just want to get rid of them, this is done, as you'd expect, with the X key. Now, there is no deletion confirmation, whether we're deleting that or we're instead deleting a list that has entries in it. Personally, I do like to have some sort of deletion confirmation, and maybe having it be disabled by default is totally fine, but having the option there has saved me in so many applications. Now, I don't have that many entries here, but let's assume that you do. If we go and press slash, this is going to take you into search mode. Now, if you have any lists in here that have child entries, all of these are going to be expanded temporarily. So as you can see with today's videos, now we can see do it video and Wayland video as separate things. If we go and search for say video, for example, then we can go and select that. And if we go and press escape, it's going to let you select one of these things. Pressing enter on that is going to jump you to that element. If you're at this stage where you can select an element, but you realize that that's not exactly the correct thing to search for, pressing slash again is going to take you back to that search prompt, keeping the text you still had in there. If we go and then delete that, we can go and search for something else. Let's say I actually wanted to get this DS element, for example. We can go and then select that and do whatever we want. But maybe easier than going and searching for something is changing the way the sorting is done. So if we go and press Control S, this is going to open up the sorting list. By default, it is sorted by name, but you can also go by date, urgency, and status. Status being whether something is completed or not. Then when you are done with the application, Control Q is going to close it. Now, I didn't go over every single key binding available. As it shows here, if we press the question mark key, is going to show you the current keys. One really cool thing this actually does is this is generated based on the keys that are configured. So if you go and modify any of the key bindings, they're going to be added into this list. On that note, the configuration file is located inside of the .config directory, inside of a folder called do it once again with two O's, and then inside of a file called config.yaml. Ignore that, that is just my vim being weird and complaining about broken plugins. And pretty much anything you could want to modify is going to be available. For example, let's say you don't like the top bars up here and you just want to show what is available in this list. You can go and hide those bars. You can go and modify all of the coloring and theming of the application obviously constrained to what is available inside your terminal color scheme. And if you want to go and do so, down the bottom here, all of the key bindings are going to be available as well. One thing I would highly recommend doing is changing select node. So while I said it was enter or L earlier, it's actually only enter by default. 
I suggested to the dev to make sure L is also bound because it wasn't being used by anything else in the application and he didn't want to fix it. So go and add this into the list to make it act more like a Vim style application. But if you don't want to use it like a Vim style application, you want to go and rebind everything to whatever it is you want to use, that's entirely possible as well. I personally think this is a pretty cool project. While it's not the most powerful to-do list out there, it's not like a to-do list in something like Logsec, for example, it does everything a to-do list absolutely needs to do. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Is this something you would go and use, or is this just another application on the ever-growing pile of applications that I've covered and that you have no interest in ever using? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, Scribe, Stone, Bearer, Pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.